Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am featuring a newly released digital stamp from Rochelle Anna Miller called Birdie Love. This is one of the four adorable images that she is releasing today. There is this one with the birds, and there is also one with a cat, one with a bunny and one with a dog. So for everyone there is an adorable new digital stamp out there. And there are so many ways or themes to use this specific and the others digital stamps for. I am going to create kind of a birthday card. I am using enjoy as a sentiment. So it's still, while well, it is still usable for many occasions, uh, but I probably will be using it as a birthday card. For this card I wanted to do some Copic coloring so I'm also going to use my Copic markers in the background, really simple although, um, and I also wanted to have really soft colors going on. So um, I am using pinks, a really soft blue with a tiny hint of purple in it, um, mint blue, beige, um, this girl is gonna have blonde hair so really really soft everything. There are many ways to color these images and I even think that a tiny rainbow in the birds would be really cool. But since I really love clean and simple cards and although I'm going to color this tiny scene all with Copics, um, I tend to keep um, the amount of different colors limited. So here everything is same as much as I can. I will also be reusing part of this combination. Um, on other areas and then the hearts as well they have the same colors depending on how big they are it can be that i add another marker to the combination just because there is so much more space in another area uh, but all by all it is kind of the same so this combination of pink and blue will be everywhere also on um, the shoes i will be using the blue color um, to keep it really minimalistic, although there are kind of all these details that Rochelle is adding to her images that I really adore. Uh, but just by reusing combinations for me, it is kind of simple. So here we can again see the markers from the birds and the shoes you will also recognize. I have been wondering, I have been on the design team from Rochelle and Miller for quite some time, so I have been showcasing some digital stamps um, and I was wondering whether in case you were like me and previously were a bit hesitant about digital stamps, have you ever tried it since uh, or you, are you like what I did in the past, uh, watching the video here and then waiting for maybe my favorite things to release? this stamp set um, in clear stamps or what do you do because I know that there was a period where I really was afraid to do digital stamps um, and I recall Rochelle Anna Miller asking me whether I was interested and I truly adored her images and that was actually the moment where I decided to try it out and even though I had an inkjet printer back then it worked fine and now I have a laser printer, but it was perfectly doable with an inkjet. Um, and there are different brands and it might be the case that you're a bit hesitant because you think that your inkjet printer isn't the best to print out your digital stamps with. Uh, but in case, there is a free digital stamp as well available. So that you can try out whether it works or not with your printer with the paper that you normally color on so in case until today you were hesitant and please go check out that free digital stamp and maybe your printer is just perfect to do this kind of coloring and then there is a whole new world gonna open for you also the advantage about digital stamps is that you can adapt the size of the image that you want to feature depending on how big your card will be or if you want to do a scene card you can minimalize the images that the designer has created because you have all of that liberty with digital stamps that you will never have with clear ones. So it can be really handy depending on what kind of cards you're making. 
Uh, so check out the free one in case you want to test it out and you never know, maybe this will be your thing then. So as I said in the beginning, the hair is going to be blonde, so I'm using the E50s here and I'm just doing a bit of flicking. Um, I said it in the past uh, when I started coloring uh, Rochelle Alvin Miller images. Um, I think hair, coloring hair is scary and it is completely out of my comfort zone and normally I would start with it, but um, I actually am using this blue combination for the first time, so I had to try that first before doing all of the rest and then I just postponed doing the hair because it scares me. Um, <laughs> the thing is that you're just flicking um, and the more vertical you hold your marker, the thinner the lines will be and the more realistic the hair can look. Um, then there is also the thing that you may, you don't have to be scared about leaving some wide areas because they can just serve as highlights. So in this case, there is like in the center there, I didn't use markers in then the centers of the two parts of the hairstyle. There isn't any markers just because it's left wide and it's just a natural highlight. For the grounding, something that I don't do often, so this background is really, really simplistic uh, and if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so I'm just flicking with my markers. I try to have the darker colors around the feet of the girl as well as just right in the back and then um, underneath the cage and then I'm just going back and forth adding a bit of the darker color also in between to, to give the grounding a bit of interest. And then I'm just trying to make sure that I have enough colored here to later on die cut this with an A2 sized die so that I have the perfect A2 sized panel. So the grounding isn't completely straight and normally it would bother me, but it didn't today. So I'm really proud uh, that I could let that go today. Um, the small things in life. And then for the sky, I actually use this mint kind of green combination, all G's, G0's, uh, really simple, again, flicking. And to avoid going into the images with the flicking, I'm just starting from the image going outwards of my panel. Also back and forth, and I definitely need to refill my markers here because some of them were really getting dry. Uh, and then it's not as nice to do a background, but it it works as well. So I just kept adding, adding, adding. And in the end, my, my sentiment will be on top. So I will have to create a bit more air um, <laughs> on this panel. But just build it up. Give a bit of interest by flicking with the darker ones in between. Fade it a tiny bit out, but it doesn't have to be perfect transition. If you don't like doing backgrounds, I get it with Copics. It's it's kind of a big step, I find, but um, from time to time I just have to try. Um, but you can always mask off your images and then you can easily just do a tiny bit of ink blending if you want to. You don't need to create a background necessarily. You can definitely also leave it wide or just add a tiny bit of grey shadowing around the the images as I did with my darker uh, marker on the grounding here, uh, it's all up to you. So here at first I didn't know where the sentiment was going to go. If you know me, you know that I just start on a card and then the sentiment most of the time is an afterthought. Uh, so in this case the same um, and Joy was going to fit in my A2 size panel. So that worked out great and it's a really joyful scene. Um, so I die cut and joy. The dies that I used uh, are the Henry's ABC dies from Lonfon. I die cut all of the letters twice to create a tiny bit of dimension on my card. I'm just laying it out here and I actually wasn't sure what I was going to do with the sentiment, whether to place it completely straight or a tiny bit wonky because I think you can get away with this alphabet set to add every letter a bit wonky. Uh, but I ended up doing it straight in the end because I don't have tons of room on the top of this panel. So straight worked fine for me. 
I used some purple tape to keep everything in place as I liked it and then I press it down and I'm just going to add the second layer once uh, my first one was adhered correctly. You can of course also first add the two layers on top of each other and then place it all together on your card panel. It's all up to you. There is no right or wrong in this case. And here I just slowly remove my purple tape to prevent the letters from peeling up, but some did. I just push it right back there and then I added my liquid glue on top to add that second layer. Now you can stop right here if you want to, just add it to a card base and your card is finished, um, which is great and I definitely was planning on doing that, but then I thought, well, maybe I can add a tiny bit of interest on top um, so after adhering this to my card base with some adhesive roller, I am going to add some stickles on the bottom half of the sentiment and the hearts will get some glossy accents. So here the glitter is stickle stardust um, and I didn't want to add it completely all over the sentiment, just creating a tiny bit of interest on the bottom. You will also see that on the pictures later on. Um, how that is shiny because of course these things need to dry before you can see the true beauty of the glitter of the glossy accents and so on So now that glossy accents on all of the hearts and Then my card is completely finished a really simple one with tons of Copic coloring an elegant but fun sentiment and just this adorable image shining um, I hope that this video inspires you, inspires you in any way that you will check out the new release because there are four new digital stamps. The design team created some fun and really lovely creations. So definitely check that out to get inspired and get going. Thank you so much for being here. I wish you all an incredible day and I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!